Hey, whoa, what's going on here? Got to stay active and got to have all the right gear. Of course, there's lots to do in winter, especially in the lower mainland where our seasons are so agreeable. We do have some diversity. Um, so we're going to stay warm and safe for our winter camping. Good morning, Andrew. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Good, good. I think I'm all, I'm all ready to go. I look the part. Yeah, you look pro. Right? Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, listen, winter camping to me, uh, the tent is an obvious thing. Let's talk about what mm -hmm. you need if you're heading out there in, in the wilderness. Yeah, so the tent is important. What you'll need is a four-season tent. So a four-season tent won't keep you warmer than a three-season tent, but it'll withstand the wind and the snow you might encounter. So for warmth, what's really important is your sleeping bag, your sleeping pad, and base layers. Okay, so we've got some examples of That's these right. things here right now. Um, when you're hiking in, and of course, like I said, I've got this, I've got this pack here right now, which essentially everything is going to want to fit in here. Yes the weight becomes an issue. Exactly, you're looking for something that's light, but super warm. So this is a great example. This is the MEC sleeping bag, good to minus 30. And here's an MEC tip, for extra warmth, stuff your sleeping bag with your insulated outer layer. So if I was going to bed in that sleeping bag tonight, I would take this outer layer and stuff it in here for extra warmth. Oh, great idea. The sleeping pad is very important because you want to stay yes. off of that cold, damp ground, right? That's right. So keeping you off the ground will keep you warm. And this is a great example. This is an MEC sleeping pad that's thick and it has two valves so it'll inflate and deflate in half the time. Okay, and awesome. then of course keeping uh, keeping uh, fed. You want to yes. keep your, your body insulated. Too. So food is super important, yeah. and the reason I brought these is because it's a great way to also keep your backpack lighter. So don't bring your extra bowls. Just bring a bag, fill it with some hot water and a spoon, and you're good to go. And very quickly, the safety aspect is very important. You offer actually classes. That's right. So MEC offers wilderness education courses at a very reasonable rate. You can learn everything you need to know about winter camping, and we also rent everything you see here. So if you're not ready to invest in your tent and your sleeping bag. We also rent winter tents, winter sleeping bags, and sleeping pads. What a great thing. If you're not ready, Russ, to write the big check yet, because <laughs> it can be expensive if you're just sort of test driving this winter camping thing. Uh, for more details on MEC, you can, of course, check out uh, Oh, that's website. pretty cool. Now, I've got a friend who's actually been egging me on to do some winter camping, and I haven't really uh, taken that brave step just yet, so maybe that's, uh, maybe that's the little... ...inspiration of being warm and dry. Exactly, and you can have fun out in the cold and you can have fun out in the snow. And Andrew, we are so lucky here again oh, in yeah. uh, the Lower Mainland because we have so many options. We talked camping earlier. What are some of your favorite spots for some winter camping? For local winter camping, I would definitely say Mount Seymour. Just call ahead to make sure you're in the right spot. And also uh, Garibaldi. It's on the way to Whistler. Beautiful. They even have a warming hut that you can use if you get too cold. Ooh, that's awesome. Now we're talking about some fun in the snow, including snowshoeing. Um, different types of snow shoots depending on what you're actually doing, right? That's right. So if you want to start some high impact activity like running, here's some running snowshoes. So what's the difference? They have a smaller package so you won't trip up when you're running and it also has a versatile binding so you can either put a boot in there or your running shoe. Okay, up next. So this is your average snowshoe. It has a wider package meaning you can go off trail. So you can go on softer snow whereas the running shoe performs better on harder pack trails. And is there anything different about the bottoms of, the, of these really or is it really more about the size of snowshoes that dictates what you can do? Yeah, it's generally the size. However, the cramp, that spike you see at the bottom can vary for traction. And then look at this cute little one here. Super cute. Yeah. We have a bunch of great styles for kids. That no. is awesome. What are some of your favorite places to go snowshoeing? Because, I mean, I've been up to Grouse before. That's a great yeah, option. Yeah, Grouse is awesome. Cypress, Seymour, and then Lost Lake out in Whistler might have snow if we don't. And that's also a lovely place. They also rent snowshoes there, too. That is beautiful. And, of course, you want to make sure you stay safe, telling people where you go, whether you're camping or snowshoeing. That's, that's right. really important, right? Yeah, let people know where you're going. Bring a basic first aid kit. We have a full list of what to bring on our website. But, yeah, definitely let people know where you're going. And then staying warm. My hands are always freezing. Waterproof boots are good but as far as what you get for gloves mm -hmm. if you're doing skiing with poles and stuff like that you don't want to end up with lack of mobility so yeah no need to get separate gloves for snowshoeing and cross-country skiing so if you're choosing gloves make sure you cho uh, test it out with poles so it moves with you great idea for more details on MEC Jody and Rias people can of course check out their website outdoors are covered what about indoors if you want to watch a movie thanks so much Don coming well, I love that beautiful color. I mean, it seems to me if you're going to be doing anything outdoors in those dark winter wet months, wearing bright colors <laughs> is a great tip for safety. We got Andrew here from MEC. High performance gear. Uh, people are kind of scared to wash their ski jackets and things that have a little bit of a coating or something like that on. That's right. Yeah. Don't be afraid of washing your gear. So naturally dirt and oils will actually compromise the performance of breathability and waterproofing. So a quick wash 
is a great way to re rejuvenate your gear. That is excellent. And of course, we are talking about fitness. In Vancouver, living on, you know, in Cool Harbor, of course, the seawall is always jam-packed with people keeping fit, whether it's walking, running, using the little Nordic pools and well <laughs> yeah. as well. But what about in North Vancouver? Where are some great spots where people stay active? So I love running at the Powerline Trails. It's just below Grouse Mountain. And the great thing about it is sometimes when it's foggy and cloudy downtown, you'll have beautiful sunshine up at the Powerline Trail. Fantastic. Great tip. But if you're going to run, you need the proper gear as well. And sometimes the conditions dictate what kind of shoes you have to wear. Exactly, so beware of ice, that's the big thing. And so what we have is a traction device that easily clips onto your running shoe and it has some spikes at the bottom. So this means you can run on ice without fear of falling. And then generally we recommend a shoe with a wide base and a grip. So even if it's not icy outside, the winter time you just want a little more stability. <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. What do we have here? So sometimes your ears and your hands are the first things to get cold when running. So you're, you're burning a lot of energy, so you're generally warm. But these are great. These are called ear bags, and they just clip onto your ears and they stay on for running, hiking, and just keep your ears warm. So it's just like almost like a little sock for your ears. So it's not as yeah. big as an ear muff. I love that. This is exactly. great, and it's nice and light. And uh, again, it will keep you nice and warm because there's nothing worse than being cold when nothing. you're being active outdoors. Exactly. Um, these look pretty fancy schmancy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. These are high performance Yes, socks. exactly. And they're perfect for winter running. You want something that fits uh, to the form of your foot, that breathes, and a wool is a great material because it stays warm even when it's a little wet. And then fantastic, a great option for safety. We won't be able to see it lit up because it's too bright right now, but what's <laughs> right. this? So this is, a, this is like one of those snap bracelets from you know elementary school, but it lights up so it blinks and it's also reflective. So it makes any outfit reflective. Any outfit reflective, staying safe, having fun in the winter months. Thank you so much <laughs> Thank for you. more details on MEC. You can check out their website.